A night raid. They track down the source of an infestation of bandits, preying on the weak, fighting without honor. And those without honor had no worth in the eyes of the gods or Gorgai. So Gorgai prepared his men. Soldiers! After me! He led from the front. Campfires! He had crept down into the predator's lair. With one man down, Infantry. they pushed on. Javelins. These men were fully equipped. Three more of his men had fallen. The next attack had to be smarter. Miss. But Gorgo wasn't trying to hit him. He couldn't risk being exposed to their throwing weapons, their javelins. So he lured them back. He had a plan. Everyone! Move! Move! The plan was working. And finally, into the belly of the beast, they nearly eradicated this hideout. Gorgai's men managed to drag him out. More bandits on their way and they could not stay any longer. A failed mission. Gorgai's warband took him to the nearby village of Robobas. Here they waited for Gorgai's wounds to heal. Gorgai met with a local who had heard of what happened and offered a reward for Gorgai to go back to the hideout and try again. Gorgai accepted this quest. He had no intention though of returning to the hideout he knew that the bandits would probably left the area after the events of that evening. But he would do what he could, keeping the northern lands safe from highwaymen. The Sturgeon people had suffered a lot in the recent years. Since the collapse of the empire, all of Kawaria was changing, and the north had to change with it. Gorgai... Gorgai felt it was up to him, to him and his warband, to help carve the way to a brighter future. A full day had passed when some of Gorgai's men had spotted a small group of brigands and Gorgai was fit enough to pursue and so they did. There was only a small group and this was just a droplet of blood but the men would have to taste. carried on their journey, recruiting locals and tracking down lawless men. Easy prey, as now they were the predators. Scouring the land for any of those unwanted. It 
became a sport. No challenge. Sure, they took a few cuts and bruises. Gorgai's men were creating a bond, becoming stronger and more experienced. Gorgai couldn't help but be proud of them. And his own aim was improving. He was becoming stronger, day by day. But it wasn't enough. It wasn't enough. To this day, Gorgai never knew that he would be a part of tales for children in the history books as some sort of divine protector of the northern realms but these stories would come later for now he would spend days tracking down small bands of men each one a story in its own but too small for the epic tale which I'm telling you now too small this tale it grows to a grand scale of blood, treachery, love, lust, greed, revenge, betrayal, and fortune. They found themselves at Reville to rest. Here they sold their plunder and produce. As usual, Gorgai spent his spare time honing his blacksmithing whilst his men were likely in the tavern indulging on beer and women. There was no denying that Gorgai wanted to join them. Do this also, but he had a personal responsibility. If he was to build a war band and become a great warrior in the eyes of the gods, he was far from prepared. They set out again. They spent nearly three full days tracking a small band of sea raiders. But was it worth it? They took a few prisoners, the roads were safer, and the weapons they acquired were of slightly higher quality. High quality plunder? Gorgai's men liked that bit. Gorgai liked tracking in the north. The snow often made it easy to detect large groups of men moving through the hills. He grew up here. This was his land and he found he could move through it easier than most. His men Archer. sometimes struggled to keep up, but they saw Archer. value in his speed. Forward. Fight after fight, with so little to no casualties on Gorgai's side. Everyone, Something about this just worked. Maybe things were turning for the better. Brighter days. Summer was coming. The spirits were getting higher. We whipped the bastards! At last! Next, they stopped in the village of Kranerog. There was no recruits here to be had, but they sold what they didn't need to carry. Because at dusk, they were to set off towards the outskirts of the Batanian territories. Just before dawn, they arrived at the village of Utalain. Gorgai brought grain here for his men. 
In the morning, they travelled towards the city of Sionon. Gorgai was looking to inspect trade prices this far out and also try out the blacksmiths. On the mountain path towards the city, however, they were confronted by a Kazate warband slightly larger than Gorgai's. First, Gorgai led his men back down the mountain to more favourable terrain before turning and engaging the enemy head on. The leader, Rugon of the Wolfskin, seemed cocky, confident, and didn't want to fight. I don't care, yield or fight, Gorgai exclaimed. Rugan's men charged forward recklessly. Gorgai spotted the wolfskin wearing Rugan. He drew his bow. He let loose. <laughs> and victory. Rugan surrendered at the mercy of Gorgai to take him prisoner. But Gorgai would take no nobleman or lord prisoner if he didn't even draw his sword. The gods would think him weak. Instead, Gorgai let him go. Maybe one day the wolf will return again, and Gorgai the shepherd will be more than happy to chase them back into the hills. Rugen's warband had 14 Batanian prisoners. Too stubborn to join Gorgai's cause though, so he took them as his own prisoners. Before long they would either join or be sold on. These weren't Batanian men of worth, little more than bandits themselves, peasants. They finally made their way up the mountainside towards Sionon. Here, he took tally of what items and armor he had for himself and Karina. The spoils of fighting were becoming more evident. Karina was starting to look like a true North woman. Gorgai dare say anything, but even starting to fight like one too. His men would do the same. They would also check their items and gear. Many of his warband were becoming much more experienced and stronger. As the months went on, the fighting went on. Gorga was slightly surprised his Imperial men were still with him. So far from home and with Northern warriors at their side, he thought they would have abandoned him long ago, but they stayed. There was a bond being formed with Gorgai's men, and with Gorgai himself. He would see what happens in the time to come. Before the day was ended, found himself in the smithy, as per usual. But once he was happy with his work, he and his men went down the other side of the mountain pass. The castle of Remtoil to their left, and the village called Clegg Ban. Here Gorgai invested in a large amount of clay, arguably too much, but he heard rumours he could make a good profit in the north. So he hired some Batanian recruits to help carry the clay. He was hoping by doing this some of the Batanian prisoners may join his cause, but only time will tell. They went back up the mountain to Sionan. Here, he would purchase a number of horses to help carry the produce and trade items. Instead of leaving the area, the warband visited the city of Manarath. Before the day was up, he bought plenty of hardwood for burning and sold a load of furs which had been carried for too long. Content, they would head north once more, on a different path to which they came. Goga never stayed anywhere for too long. In fact, his time spent injured in the imperial city of Lycairon was the longest he'd ever laid his head in the same place, because exploration was in his nature. On the road, some of the prisoners wanted in, including the Batanian men. It was working. They saw and heard Gorgai's men enjoying themselves and they wanted in. The Gorgai indulged them. The village of Andern. Here he sold a, f a few of the spare and broken weapons he had plundered. His money was quite low. Soon they arrived in the Sturgeon lands and stopped at a nearby village. The wages of his men were drying up Gorgai's purse. He had spent too much on the clay and couldn't recruit even more men. He sold a couple of more items to keep him going and to hire the men that wouldn't join. Until he could offload the clay, he would be poor. Varchek. Gorgai spent the day here resting his men from the journey to Batania. During this time, he refined and smelted materials. Maybe he could make a small bit of money, just to tie him over. 
Gorga had made plans to travel to Ravir. This is where he could sell his supply of clay, as the rumours said in Britannia, he would fetch a good profit here. He also heard rumours of the tournament. This alone was enough for Gorgai to make the trip to the far northwestern corner of the Sturgeon territory, and the road was quiet. Once he arrived in Reville, he went straight to the market, but it wasn't good news. The price of clay was nearly half of what he expected. Maybe the rumours were too much common knowledge, and the trade caravan had already beat him here. Alas, no trade would be done in Reville today. He recruited some of the sea raiders from his prisoners of his warband, along with a couple of Batanians. The raider chief, however, was having none of it, so he sold knows he didn't want to join for some quick coin. The tournament was on. At least one rumour was correct. Gorgai didn't want to sell the clay at a loss, so this would be his last chance to earn some quick money to keep his warband going strong for now. If he could win. The lists were drawn up. Gorgai and Karina both had a spot. Gorgai was glad to see Karina win her first round. He weighed quite a lot of coin on his first fight. As he was battling against the local Michelin, he was confident. A few shield blocks and the swinging of his axe. The fight was over quickly. Next, a round of spear and shield. Unfamiliar territory for Gorgai. However, before his next fight, he decided to watch Karina's next battle. She was against an Imperial Palantine guard. This would be a very tough fight. A trained veteran of the Empire against someone who picked up her first sword not a year ago. Poor guy with a sigh, but also a smile murmured to himself. She fought well. Now it was his turn. Gorgai gripped the spear firmly, ran at his enemy and went to jump and lunge at his opponent. Before he could dedicate his strike, the enemy managed to get the initiative and catch Gorgai low. This was a trained Sturgeon Spearman. Gorgai used an axe and this man used a spear. As the fight continued, he picked away at Gorgai. Gorgai's anxiety beginning to grow. Gorgai had a high block, but somehow the spear found his way round and near his throat. This happened again and again in the same spot. Blood started to come from somewhere. Gorgai's time was running out. He pulled his arm back to thrust. Defeat. Again. He was getting sick of this. Defeat in combat again. His calling was to fight to appease the gods. How could Gorgai fight to appease the gods if he couldn't even fight with a spear? Gorgai stormed back to the arena when the tournament had ended. He would enter the practice room and swore not to leave until there was no one left to fight him. He left the dead in the Empire's lands. The defeat of the bandit hideout. Being jumped in the alleyways of the northern city. And now the arena in front of the spectacle of people he was defeated. Never again he would become stronger, faster. Immortal.
Word had reached school guy's ear. Another tournament was being held at Sabir. Gorgai made his way with his men straight away. Ignoring men on the road. Easy fights. Gorgai had to redeem himself in some sense. He had to prove to the gods he wasn't weak anymore. The tournament was on. Good. Before he entered though, he recruited a Sturgeon warrior, a Sturgeon woodsman from the city ranks. It was rare to see people with slightly more experience, it's normally the peasants and the recruits available to Gorgai. Maybe he was making a name for himself. He went to the market. The clay was still not worth a lot, but he sold some of the materials he had left over from blacksmithing. Gorgai didn't have a lot of money still, about 500 coins, so he sold any of the old tools and weapons they had. I'm on the road, fighting looters and bandits. This would give him enough money for now. To feed his men, keep morale high. And if he lost again, he could maybe afford it. Gorgai also traded out. His quiver and arrows were slightly more quality bunch. And when he was all done, he made his way over to the arena. His blood pulsing in his veins, he was ready again. If he failed this time, he would live in shame. First round, 
and Macarena together. A fierce team. And Macarena entered the combat. Weapons flying, Golai takes a hit in the side and then the face. His guard is up. He swings around, catches the Sea Raider. And together, the Macarena take down the second foe. This time he was alone. Karina, Gorgai, a Batanian wood runner, and a Sturgeon militiaman. All against each other. He'd be against Karina this time. There'd be no hard feelings. Gorgai with spear and shield, his least favorite combination. He was pulling back towards the other two. He was doing this perhaps to get the attention of the third man who had slain Karina, unfortunately. Himself. Don't lose again. Close. Stab. Ah, and in the lower thigh. Victory. Two more competitors to go. Spear and shield still. This made Gorgai nervous, but he kept his resolve as he fought on. Gorgai poised to strike. Another man bites the dust. To the final round. A Sturgeon veteran. A bowman, yes, but still a veteran. Spear and shield again. Who would win? Before he realized he'd won, his hard work had paid off. Until next time, friends.